Hey, welcome back to Five Lakes Garage. I'm excited today because we are gonna go out onto the trails tomorrow morning. So uh, hopefully you've seen some other videos about prepping for the trail, getting ready for the trail, making sure your rig will survive. Well, today we're gonna load it up on the trailer. Tomorrow morning we're gonna head out to Uari and hit some trails. Uh, we gotta pick up some trash, we gotta go out and uh, dig some trenches, trying to get the water off the trails. Uh, I think the biggest problem this weekend, or tomorrow, is gonna be trash. Uh, not a lot of people have been out there this year and there's going to be a lot of trash out there because not a lot of volunteers have been going out there to actually pick up after these sorry scumbags that throw their beer bottles everywhere. Anyway, but I wanted to show you real quick the trailer that I'm using. Now this is not my trailer. This is a buddy of mine's and he actually got it from underneath me. I actually sent him the link. I'm like, dude, man, this thing looks cool. I'm, I think I'm looking at it. And he goes out there and he's like, yeah, sorry, I already bought that one. Yeah, that's what happens, but it's okay though. He's a good bud and he lives right down the road and I can pretty much borrow it anytime I really want to. But uh, after towing it and using it for a little bit, it's a little bit too long. I'm looking for a 12 footer, at least a 7,000 pound because the pumpkin doesn't weigh that much. Um, but if I get a 12 footer with the pumpkin, I might be able to tow it with the taco so I can have cruise control and air conditioning that the Dodge does not have. Anyway. So let's take a look at this trailer. So it is a 10,000 pound trailer. He's got a nice battery sitting here. He's got a winch right there to haul in the hunk of junk that actually uh, dies. Got a spare tire. And this is the part of the whole thing that is awesome. So what it is, it's a dump trailer. So you don't have to worry about ramps. You don't have to worry about hauling them, pulling them out or anything like that. You just pull this lever and the whole thing goes up. Check it out. You unhook the hook and it slowly rises up so you can actually crawl right up on it look at that all right so i'm gonna go ahead and pull the pumpkin up here so we can go and get get it locked down i'll show you uh, the way that at least we chain everything down or strap it down and uh you might have a different way but this is our way so check it out All right, she's up there. Still needs to be strapped down and everything like that, but we're okay. And you're probably wondering, why am I so far forward? See, it's kind of got plenty of room in there. Well, that's a 20 foot trailer. That thing's huge. Pumpkin's really small. It doesn't weigh a whole lot, but here's my problem. <clears throat> my buddy has a Ford. Uh, it's four wheel drive. It's got like a thousand foot pounds of torque. Uh, plenty of power, a lot more than my little Dodge here, but <clears throat> He has either one, a drop hitch that is lower than mine, <clears throat> or his truck just sits lower. But the tongue itself, you can see it here, it is adjustable. And so what it is is that it was sitting way too high in the front. So what I did was actually load it up there so the trailer is actually pretty much level along with the truck. See? So anyway, we don't want it up too high, we don't want it down too low, kind of level is great. You still want to have enough tongue weight to be able to keep the fishtail out of the out of the equation uh, but it does have trailer brakes which is an essential when you're towing this much weight <clears throat> also another tip too make sure your tags are fit for the weight that you're not only carrying with behind you or and the truck both both weights have to count um i think i have this truck set for like maybe 16 or 17 thousand pounds which will cover what's in the bed your trailer and whatever you're towing as well as the weight of the truck and the trailer. It's 100% all the way through. I can't go above, I think it's like 17,000 pounds, which I think I'm good to go. I'm not gonna do anything like that. But anyway, we are going to trail prep the actual trailer. Uh, we're gonna go and check tire pressure. We're gonna check grease, uh, grease it if we can. Uh, we're gonna check the brakes. Uh, we're gonna jack up each side, kind of wiggle the wheels around a little bit, make sure the bearings are nice and tight. We're not gonna go too too crazy. Uh, the lights do work, the brakes do work, because I didn't bring it over here, so we're good there. But just to be safe, just check them. But anyway, I'm gonna keep going and strapping this guy down. So watch out. All right, I got everything ready to strap the Jeep onto the trailer. Now there's a couple things and a couple tips that I like to put out there and come a couple of uh, do's and don'ts, so to speak. All right, now, so if you're gonna actually strap down a vehicle, uh, you would either want to do two different things. One, you want to strap it to the axle or strap it to the tires. Um, I don't have any of the tire wraps that you see out there, 
And then basically all it is is a nylon strap that goes all the way around the tire and you bolt that down or strap that down. Well, I don't have any of those. Um, I do have some uh, axle straps, which are these guys here. Uh, they're very short. They have two steel D-rings on the end and you put that around the axle and then you put the, the strap up to this. Now this keeps it from fraying because it does have some protective uh, mesh that's around it. And uh, if you use a regular ratchet strap or something like that, it could start fraying and then rip off and then you're, you, lo you lose your load. You don't want to do that. So we have four of these, one for each corner. Um, as far as ratchet straps go, then you can use chains. You can also use ratchet straps. All the ones that I have here are a 10,000 pound rating and uh, picked up either from Agri Supply or Northern Tool Supply. Uh, those are the two main places I go uh, for that type of thing. But not all straps are created equal. So I'm gonna show you this one. All right, so you have this guy right here. I got this from Agri Supply. It is a 10,000 pound ratcheting ratchet strap. Now, here's the difference, the end of the clip. Now, this one is not as bad. I do have some that are like really wide. And this right here is mostly for straps to go up and over the other side. Um, if you were to hook this up there and it's at an angle, that strap right there will start tearing. You don't want to have that. Um, when, you're, when I'm doing a vehicle, there's a certain type of strap that I'd like to use, which are these guys. Now, these right here actually has a, more of a hook style so that it will pivot a little bit better. Um, and then it will keep uh, you know, equal pressure all the way across the strap and it has a less likelihood of fraying. Now also, if you look at this guy right here, this strap right here is, is relatively thin. I mean, it's thick, it's nice and strong, don't get me wrong, but it is relatively thin. Now, if I were to look at this one, this is more rounded and it's a little bit more protective of the actual strap. So be sure you know which straps you're actually gonna use. So I'm gonna crawl underneath this thing and actually put my straps on there and then strap them down to my D-rings that are out here on the rig. Now, some people will want to say like, oh, attach it to the frame and stuff like that. The only problem with attaching it to the frame is that you have your sprung weight. So basically your vehicle itself is using the suspension. Every time you hit a bump, it goes up and down and it's going to start beating on your straps. Uh, we don't want it to beat on the straps. We want it to be secure. So I'm going to go ahead and hook these up and you get to see it. All right, so I got both straps uh, set up in the rear and I'm gonna show you the quick way of actually making sure that they're secure and a couple of different tips. So, come down here. Okay, so you have your ratchet here. I have all of my strap, which is really long by the way, but I'm gonna show you what you're gonna do with that here in a minute. So, we're gonna keep this. We got a nice amount of slack in here because what you wanna do is have, actually have a couple of rings around the actual barrel so that the harder it gets pulled, the tighter it gets. If you only have one ring, it could slip off. I've seen uh, the Boss Garage mess up his GTO that way. Where he did not have enough uh, twists around the barrel and has messed up his brand new paint job. Such a sad thing. But anyway, all right, so that's one ring. Two rings. All right, so I do have the brake on and we're gonna go ahead and snug it up. We're not gonna get it too tight. I'm gonna pull this down. That actually locks into place and we're not gonna be able to get it done so it does latch into place so it will not come loose i'm gonna do the other side and go ahead and get these two snug pretty much at the same spot now i'm gonna go to the front and do the same thing up there and then pull depending on which way i want to actually pull the jeep i will uh, use that side to actually tighten everything down and then once i do that i'll show you what to do with all this extra all right stay tuned All right, when you're actually strapping this stuff up into the rear and attaching it to the axle, a couple things you wanna keep in mind. One, don't pinch any brake lines. Don't pick it, pinch any electrical lines. Uh, make sure that you're not gonna unnecessarily fray any of the uh, straps themselves. Once they start fraying, pretty much just gonna throw them away. They're not good anymore. So make sure all that is secure. Um, now we're gonna have four straps that are 10,000 pounds each one of these straps would be able to hold this thing down but we got four because you never know one might fall off or you might hit a freight train or whatever and i don't want my jeep to fall off the trailer keep them both together because there's only one projectile instead of two so anyway i'm gonna do the front i'll come right back and i'm gonna show you what to do with these 
All right, I already told you like uh, what I was gonna do with the rest of the stuff here. All right, you have all this strap. You could kind of curl it up and kind of strap it to the main strap and it'll get it out of the way and it's not gonna be dangling behind you. But since you already have it, you might as well use it as a safety device. All right, so if this strap breaks right up here in front of the uh, ratchet, pretty much done. It's out, it's going away. But since it's already wrapped around the barrel a few times, you can use this as your safety. So it's not gonna keep it extremely tight, but you gotta do something with it anyway, right? So what we're gonna do is tie it up there to the Jeep and then tie it to somewhere else. Uh, in case of an emergency, it might save your rig. It might not. But what else are you gonna do with it? So there you go. Um, I know I said earlier not to tie it up to the main rig, not to your bumper or your chassis or anything like that. But as you can see, these guys are not really supporting anything. It's only for his safety and you gotta do something with it anyway. Uh, at the end, you just kind of do a couple half hitches. Uh, you do as many as you can so it doesn't flop in the breeze. Once they start flopping, they can start fraying. So we don't do that. So I'm gonna do the same to the front. And then we're gonna go over a couple little odds and ends before you leave. Like tire pressure. Stay all right one thing you definitely want to do before you go out is check your tire pressure not so much on the cj because we're going to deflate those down once we actually get to the trail but your tires on your trailer on your truck uh different loads require different different pressures um i like to go a little bit on the heavy side um just because i don't like swaying or anything like that and looking at these guys Wow, uh, so apparently my bud really likes 80 PSI in the trailer tires, which if you look on the side of the rim or the side of the tire, it says 80 as a max. I don't like going to the max, only because of the amount of bouncing and stuff like that. You wanna to try to give it a little bit more leeway. But this side is in the sun. Keep that in mind too. This is regular air that we're putting in there. We're not putting nitrogen. So. The ones in the sun is going to read a lot higher than the ones out of the sun. So I'm going to go to the other side and make sure they're all the same. I want to put all the trailer ones at 70. I'm going to put uh, about 65 or so in the rear of the truck and about 55 on the front. 55 on the front just to make it ride a little bit easier. It is a three quarter ton and it rides like a brick. So let's go. You know, I almost forgot. Always, always, always check your spare. I've seen it so many times people are out on the trail or out on the highway. They're like, well, I changed my tire, but that's flat too. Okay, what's the point of having two flat tires? So check the pressure in your spare tire. Make sure they match whatever's on the trailer or on the truck. So check it. All right, hopefully this kind of helps you trying to get everything ready for the trail. Uh, Cause the, you can't really ride the trail until you get to the trail. And if you're going to be towing your vehicle over there, there are a couple things that you really wanted to do. Hopefully you learned a little bit of something. Uh, if you want to educate me, obviously put down some in the comments. Let me know. What do you do? What works for us for you? Is something I'm doing that's not working? Let me know. Um, a lot of people actually cross their straps. And I totally understand why. Um, in this particular case, the way my axles are actually set up, uh, it was really hard to find a spot that wasn't going to chafe on something. Um, so I just go straight back to the back. Uh, it seems to work very well. Uh, I've taken it up to the mountains. I've taken it around a lot of windy roads and it works out pretty well. But I do understand why they cross it so that it doesn't swing back and forth. So if that works for you and you can do it, by all means, please do it. <laughs> But anyway, all right, so like, subscribe, tell a friend, share, all that good stuff, and let me know what you think. I'm going to do a couple more, so I'll see you in a few. Later.